I want to start off with this. In, in, uh, if you would turn to your Bibles in Luke chapter 11, and then we're going to go on to the series. Man, I'm excited. I'm excited because you're excited. We had a great Wednesday night meeting also, praying, worshiping God. And uh, at the end of our Bible study, we went over the sermon from last week. And, and uh, I brought uh, my Coke with me. And uh, I'm just going to get ready. Okay, guys? Just going to get ready. All right? Um, for an explosion of the Holy Spirit in your lives. Amen. Amen. In your lives. Amen. Praise God. But I want to, since it's Father's Day, I want to start off with this. Luke chapter 11 records that this gift of the Holy Spirit was from Father God to you. Amen. Yeah. And I love that. I'm like, God, how do I open up a service today? It's Father's Day. I don't want to really preach one of those Father's Day messages, even though I love fathers. I think fathers need to be in every family, you know, if you're, you don't have a father in your family, then God said, I'll be a father for your family, so praise the Lord, you have everything you need, I'll be a husband to those the widows, right, he'll do all those things that you need and that you're missing in your life, Father God will do it for you, but the gift of the Holy Spirit, we're talking about uh, over the last couple of weeks, um, I want to show you in scripture, this is from Father God to you. As a gift additional to salvation, the gift that he gave us through his son Jesus. He prepared, and he wants you to know that this is from him. So let's look at that real quick. And um, verse 9, um, I don't want to read the whole thing, but Jesus was praying and teaching, and he said this. So I say to you, ask, and it will be given to you. Seek, and you will find. Knock, and the door will be opened to you. For everyone who asks receives. He who seeks finds, and in him who knocks uh, the door will be open. Which of you fathers, talking to all their fathers, if your son asks you for a fish, would give him a snake instead? Or if he asks for an egg, would you give him a, a scorpion? If you then, uh, though you are evil, know how to give good gifts to your children, how much more will your heavenly Father, uh, your Father in heaven, give you the Holy Spirit to those that ask? So you say, well, I want, I mean, through the series and through reason act, I want more of the Holy Spirit in my life, right? I want to recognize the Holy Spirit. I want to move. I want to partner with the Holy Spirit in every aspect of my life. And you know what? I just I think God is so amazing. He just says, just ask me. Yeah. Just ask me and I'll give you what you need, not only your physical needs, not what, not only what you need, um, uh, for your life, but ask me about this Holy Spirit because I want to give this Holy Spirit to you freely so you have power, and I'll share this at the end, to be a witness for God that you will have the power to let the world know that Jesus is alive today, yesterday, today, and forever. Jesus is alive, and I want to be a witness to that. I want to share with people that are hurting Jesus is alive. I want to share with people that are in need that Jesus can provide. I want to share with people that are, 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 are having problems in their lives that Jesus can help you overcome that problem. Amen. Jesus can do it, and I need to partner with the Holy Spirit yeah. to be able to have that power yes. and not fear and not be anxious and not worry but just have boldness yeah. to be his witness today. Amen? Amen? God wants you to do that. Amen? He wants to give you that power. Hallelujah. And so going over this baptism in the Holy Spirit and the Holy Spirit brought a lot of emotions over the last few weeks. I think some people were like, man, that's not for me. Or I'm not really sure about that yet. Or somebody got really excited. All right, Pastor Andrew, you're preaching on the Holy Ghost. I can't wait to start preaching on the Holy Ghost because I know that's what we need in our church so we can overcome the things that we have right now. We need to be a powerful witness in this city. So, man, it's about time we're preaching on the Holy Ghost, right? And that's some of you, and that's great. Amen? Some of you are, like, curious. Like, what does this mean? What does this mean? What is this, what's, what's happening right now? I mean, I, I, I see it in the Word because we don't teach anything else, right? We see it in the Word. It says that this gift was from the Father, and then Jesus said the Holy Spirit is going to tell you everything the Father tells you so you can have wisdom from God. I, I, I want some of that. I, 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 want, to, I want to learn more. I'm going to get like that. I'm, just, I'm leaning in. I want, I want more. I want to understand more. And then some of us have gotten some, I call it stinking thinking, or stinking t teaching in our past. The teen and I grew up that way. We went to a church that didn't believe in the Baptist Holy Spirit. Matter of fact, they told us that it was from the devil. I'm like, what? 
Um, remember that? Pastor, I, I, we invited the pastor to come to our house because we didn't understand. Because we read the book of Acts also at that time. And we're like, wow, we're going to win our whole city to Jesus. We're going to have power to cast out demons and praise God and, and worship. And we're going to, man, pastor, what's about it? No, this is not right. So we're like, no, I didn't. I kind of like, I mean, I, I, I'm a military guy, so I respect authority. So it was really hard for me to say, Pastor, you're wrong. Like, this is not, this is not good. So it, it took me a lot to overcome my teaching from my past. But now that I hear about it again in my Christian walk, I think, man, there's something there that is powerful, and I want it, and I need it. And I'm like, I'm leaning forward. I want to know more about it. So I was fasting when and Pastor Andrew said, let's fast for a while. And he said, let's read through the book back. So I did that. So now I'm like, okay, I'm, I'm getting this. This is not something that's doctrinally, that is something that, will, that we have to believe in. This is like the Bible. This is our Father in Heaven that wants to pour into you His Spirit so you can do the mission that God intended us to do from the beginning. Amen? So I'm like kind of excited about it too, man. I'm, I'm like, I want more too. I want like... I just want more of God, right? I want to, like, sing holy. You said it earlier. Holy, I mean, it's dreaming. I got up at 2 this morning. I was like, wow, God, you are amazing. I don't know what you're going to do tomorrow. Which, well, we should actually today. Uh, I don't know what you're going to do, but God, just do it in our life. Will you change us? Whatever needs to be changed in me, do it. Whatever needs to be changed in our church, do it, God. I give God permission. I'm not going to hold back. Like, God, you can't do this because, you know, I'm not really sure about it. I just want it all. I mean, just want it all, right? Whatever God wants, I want it. And I want to be like Him. I want to do what He wants me to do. I want to partner with Him and do whatever He wants to do. It's not, it, listen, it's not about, I'm learning something too. It's not about performing for God. It's about partnering with God. So, well, it's all about doing, doing, doing. We talk about that, right? We talk about a family of servant missionaries. So missionaries mean we've got to go out and preach. But, you know, it, it's not about that doing part, really. It's about partnering and knowing the heart of God through the Holy Spirit and knowing that he, His heart breaks when He sees lost people. His heart breaks when you're in need. His heart is, is so concerned about you that now we get the heart of God and then I can share Jesus easy because now I, I'm compassionate towards the people of this world because I'm with and moving with the Spirit of God. Amen. Acts 19 says that, did, did you receive, Paul said to the church there um, at, at uh, Ephesus, or, uh, yeah, Ephesus, he, sa he says, uh, did you receive the Holy Spirit when you believed? And they said, well, we never even heard of this Holy Spirit. We never heard of what, what is this Holy Spirit about, right? And when Paul placed his hands on them, they began to speak in tongues and prophesy. And there were 12 ministers, or in Acts 19, there was 12 of them that did this. So we see that not only was that the Holy Spirit was outpoured in the beginning of Acts in the disciples, but then we see later on, as the church grew, that the church, the Holy Spirit was given to, and Andrew, uh, Pastor Andrew referred to it earlier, to the Gentiles. The, the, the non-Jewish people received this Holy Spirit also, just like it happened in Jerusalem. And I was thought to myself, what happened in Jerusalem that was so significant that they would that be recorded that way in Scripture? And I'm thinking, you know, we talked about it on our Wednesday night group. I mean, here we see in the first part of Acts chapter 2, the, the Spirit came in. First of all, the disciples went and prayed. I mean, you know, sometimes things change in life when we pray. Yeah. So they were not only obedient to what Jesus told them to do, but they were also praying and worshiping God. We don't know what's going to happen. Jesus said, be here, tarry here until the Holy Spirit comes. So we're just like, we're going to gather together, we're going to pray together, and we're going to seek God, and we're just going to praise Him, because we know He does all things, because we saw that Jesus that was dead was alive. I mean, there was some excitement in that obedience to going to tearing in Jerusalem. So they waited, all of a sudden they, we heard there was a sound of a rising, mighty wind that came in that room. I don't know what the Holy Spirit sounds like, but it must have been pretty awesome. And He came in and filled that room, and everyone that was there, there was tongues of fire that sat on them. So we talked about Wednesday night. Why tongues of fire? What is that so significant about the fire? Because we see the Holy Spirit is fire cleansing 
fire, change my character. I'll just use Peter as an example. Peter putting his foot in his mouth every time you see Peter, right? Up to this point. Then the fire came. It cleansed old Peter into new Peter. Right? Old Peter was no more. He's, he didn't put his foot in it. Matter of fact, he was willing to die for the gospel at that point. The Spirit of God filled him up, and then they began to prophesy. They began to speak in tongues, and the people that were in the area at that time, all different languages, heard their own language. So sometimes this gift of tongues could be a language that you'd never learn. How many speak a different language here besides English? Little bit, little bit. Okay, got it. Right. So if I begin to speak in Spanish really good fluently, that would be God's doing it through because I don't know Spanish. I try. Hola, you know. <laughs> but, um, that's about it. <laughs> but I taco, burrito. I mean, I love to speak. And so if I come up here and I'm speaking in tongues, man, you know, it, it would not be. Uh, well, I'll get into it a bit later. But anyway. God would do that. And so these people heard this miraculous thing happen. And they thought, well, they're all drunk, right? That's what it says in the Acts, right? It's only 9 o'clock in the morning. They ain't drunk. That's what Peter said. And Peter stood up with boldness and began to share what happened to Jesus and how they crucified him, how they killed him, how he raised him from the dead. And thousands of people gave their life to Jesus. So I'm going to follow Jesus after that. How many want that power in your life? Yeah. How many want the power of the Holy Spirit? So when you stand up and begin to preach, Thousands of people in your neighborhood and your friends and your co-workers and y'all come to Jesus yeah. because you're speaking boldly, boldly what God put in Peter. And all the other disciples we know did the same thing. We just made our example in the Bible. There's not enough words, and enough space in the Bible for all the miracles that happened in that early church time. I want to tell you, I'm standing here today. That has not changed to this time. And it's not going to change until Jesus comes back. I don't, I've been taught wrong. I was taught wrong. Oh, that is ended. That And the reason they say that is we have the Bible now. I mean, that which is perfect has come. We use it in Acts 13. So when that perfect, which is perfect come, then we don't need it now because we have the Bible. That's a lie. We need the Holy Spirit to understand this just as much as we need the Holy Spirit to help us in our everyday lives. Amen? So we're going to, today, we're going to encourage you. I want to encourage you that you're going to partner with the Holy Spirit today and forever as we go forward to do one most, and this is the end of my sermon, but I'll tell you right now anyway, to be, to be able to share with the dying world that this Jesus who came and died on the cross, suffered for the sins of the world, shed his blood for everything, was beat beyond recognition, all that happened, so we today can live in His grace and love and peace and then be His witnesses for the world, a dying world as we don't have it in our spirit that the purpose of partnering with the Spirit of God is that we have a dying world around here and it's our responsibility to complete the mission that Jesus started to share that Jesus is alive and He loves you and He cares about you and He's going to help deliver you from your past. He's going to heal the hurts in your heart. He's going to come and cleanse you and make you whole so you can be a witness, be a light in the world that's dying around us. We have to get the heart of God in us because, listen, God, <laughs> I'm sorry, Amy, I just I looked at you and, and yesterday just flooded into my heart, in my mind, and, and God has placed you in a place to minister and to love on people because you have what it takes yes. through Amen. His power and grace Amen. to save and to yes. heal and to set free and to love and to love yes. and to love. I can't, I, I'm not a lover, so I, I need God to show me how to love, right? Right? Amen. Praise the Lord. Hallelujah. First point. <laughs> Hallelujah. I was, I was going to do a short sermon. I told Pastor Andrew, I said, listen, I'm going to preach for 15 minutes. That's it. We're going to come and we're going to worship Richard and Tina. We're going to come up or we're going to sing. Uh, um, what's the song? <laughs> What's the song? How great is our God? How great is our God? Yes. We're going to worship. 
at the end of this. Yeah. And we want you to come and worship with us. And we're going to praise him and thank him. And of God, I pray God fill you with his spirit. Whatever is lacking in your life, whatever uh, you don't understand about the spirit of God, you come. And at the end of the service, we're going to worship together and we're going to pray for you. Amen. If you don't know Jesus as your Lord and Savior today, hopefully this is the day that you say yes to Jesus. And if you want more of God's spirit so you can be his witness, we're going to pray for more of that. We just want, I want God to download into you everything that he has for you, and I want you to be open to receive that. Can we pray that right now? Amen. Let's pray that right now. Father, I pray for each and every person that's here today. And no matter where we're at in our walk with you, God, no matter what our struggles are, no matter what they are, God, I pray that today we would take a step closer. That we say yes to Jesus. You are my Lord and Savior. I will follow you all the days of my life. Yes, Jesus, I'm going to be your disciple. And if we're already his disciples, we're going to say, yes, Jesus, forgive me of my sins to take away the unrighteousness that is I hide in my heart. Open it up and cleanse me so I can be full of your spirit. Hallelujah. So I can be your witness and tell people that you are alive and you are real and that you care. Jesus, thank you for that today. Yeah. In your precious name, amen. amen. What uh, is restored, uh, when we partner with Jesus, he restores in me. Jude 20 says that build yourself up in the most holy faith by praying in the Holy Spirit. So when we are taught that this is not for today, then how do we build and encourage ourselves? We go to church. We try to hang out with Christian people. We try to read our Bible. We try to understand it. But without the Holy Spirit, it all has no meaning. Just coming to church is, a, is great. Don't get me wrong. Keep coming, okay? But it doesn't fulfill us like the Spirit of God does. And when we pray, when we're desperate, when we don't know what to turn to, we can pray. You don't have to. I mean, we just taught this in James. Call the elders of the church when you're sick. But you don't have to. You can pray and God will heal you too, right? But call us. We love to call you, anoint you with oil, pray for you. We love doing that kind of stuff. But you can do it also because the Holy Spirit says, build yourself up. Encourage yourself in the Holy Spirit. I'm weak. I'm struggling. I need help. What do you do? Pray in the Holy Spirit. Pray in that prayer language. Pray in that language that God gives you. Amen? The Holy Spirit is like a cleansing water. It says, out of your bellies will flow rivers of yes. living water. Yes. Hallelujah. What is, I mean, you, if water is moving, it's cleaning, right? Yeah. Right? If the water is moving, if the Holy Spirit is moving through you, it's taking out the impurities, it's taking out, if you ever go to a pond uh, uh, and see there's no fresh water that fills into a pond, if you go to a pond and there's no fresh water, it's just it's stagnant, it's green, algae's grown, it's just no life in it, right? But the, I was at a pond this past week with my dad, and he has a big pond. I caught it, the biggest bass ever I ever my whole life, but I, I didn't get to the boat. But anyway, it was big. But in that pond is this natural spring that runs right through it. So you have these little fish and big fish and frogs and birds, and it's just there's life in that pond. And so in us too, as we let the Holy Spirit flow through us, what happens? There's fresh water flowing through us. It's life-giving, right? The Holy Spirit comes out of us and we give life to those that it touches. Amen? Or, you know, you just examine yourself. Are you a stinky pond or are you got a, a pond that's alive? You know? You look at it. Yeah. Yeah, I don't want to be a stinky pond. The thing about it, like, um, you ever have a cut? And you used, uh, anybody ever used hydrogen peroxide to clean out the wound? Yeah. Oh, yeah. Yeah. The Holy Spirit's just like that. So you got a cut, you got a hurt, you got an uh, imperfection in your life. Well, you pour that the peroxide, the Holy Spirit will come in and cleanse the, even the deepest crevices of your heart. All the secret stuff that you don't think anybody knows about, God knows, right? God knows it, but He wants to fix it for you. So he sends his Holy Spirit like that peroxide and get right into every crevice, every little part of your life, and he'll get rid of that for you if you let him. If you let him. 
Oh God, pour your peroxide all over my life. Take everything in my brain that's not right, everything in my physical body that's not right, everything in my spirit that's off. Would you just take that peroxide, God, and just let it get into the very depths of my heart and my mind and my soul? So pure, holy, I think I can say this, bring it back to my Catholic roots, pure, holy water will flow out of us. That's my version of it. It's not in the Bible. It's just, it says living water. Holy water. Flow. Flow to those that are hurting and needing. Amen. That's why you need the baptism of the Holy Spirit. That's why you need to speak in tongues. It encourages us in our spirit so we can use it for his glory. For, in 1 Corinthians 14, 19, Paul tells us how to use this, right? It says, I thank God that I speak in tongues. This is 1 uh, Corinthians 14, 18 through 19. I thank God that I speak in tongues more than you all. But in the church, I'd rather speak five intelligent words than 10,000 words in tongues. So if I come up here and I'm speaking tongues and I'm preaching to you, you probably wouldn't understand what I'm saying, unless you have the interpretation or, or you were from that whatever language, right? It would not be good. So it would be edifying to you. You'd be like all confused. And God is not an author of confusion. Amen? So Paul says this, though. I want to tell you. So speaking in tongues is an amazing thing to build up yourself, but also it encourages the church body. So we see there's also a gift. So we have tongues and interpretation. That equals prophecy. So Paul says, I'd rather have you in verse 2, two excuse me, for everyone who speaks in tongues does not speak to people, but to God. Now, how does that speak to God? He knows English and tongues, so he knows both. So anyway, indeed, no one understands them. They utter mysteries by the Spirit. So you're talking in your spirit. Your spirit's talking with God. And you begin to praise Him and worship Him. Sometimes when I'm praying in tongues, God will give me something to pray for. So I'm praying for somebody. So sometimes uh, missionaries, I pray for them in my spirit language, and I don't know what's going on overseas or whatever's happening, but God does, and I just begin to pray because God leads me to pray. A lot of times at 2.10 in the morning, that's my time. And God, when I wake up at 2.10 in the morning, uh, then I'm on the East Coast, it's 3.10, but anyway, uh, it's just, I don't know how God does that, but you know, if it's 2.10 here, then it's 3.10 there, he said I wake up at 3.10. At 10 after, I know it's time for me to get on my knees and pray. In the spirit, I don't pray. I don't want to pray for it, and I pray in the spirit. So when you, we look at that in the church, Paul described the church. In the church, we don't want you to cause confusion, so we want you to prophesy. So as we go back to Acts chapter two, and you say, hey, we should desire to prophesy. So what does that mean? Oh, well, preaching's prophecy, but can we prophesy to each other to the church? What does prophecy do to the body of Christ? It encourages us. It encourages us to continue to fight the good fight of faith. It encourages us to go on. No matter what the world throws at us, when we prophesy, it says, yes, I can do whatever God tells me to do. So go continue, Linda. You do it. I know you're tired. I know you, you sometimes get exhausted. But listen, you're doing a great work for God. Don't stop. Amen. I can't do it in my own strength. Amen. I'm 57 this year. I get a little tired sometimes. I can't do it. <laughs> I know some of you are a little bit older than I. I was going to use your age, but you know, <laughs> since I know that. But sometimes I'm tired. And I can't do this without my own strength. I need the Spirit of God to do it with me. Amen? And He will do it. I'm partnering with Him. I need Him to do it with me. Amen? And so there's two purposes of tongues. There's your private use when you pray in your prayer closet. And it's the public use as you worship God together. That's what we're going to do in a little bit. Worship God together. Yeah. Everybody praying in their spirit language. For you that don't know that, it's okay. It's from God. I remember one time I was at Okinawa, Japan with one of my Marine buddies. And I've been witnessing him, sharing Jesus with them for months. And I was working on my first class called The Life of Christ with my first convention class for being a minister. I was in my room working on it. All of a sudden there's a knock on the door he says, hey, Bob, can I go to church with you tonight? I'm like, wow, this is awesome. You know, I try not to contain myself, you know, but, oh, yeah. And then I thought, oh, no. 
because the pastor was going to preach on the baptism of the Holy Spirit that night. I thought, oh no, he's going to get there and be all confused, and it's not going to, he's not going to know what's happening. And I'm like, oh, yes, okay, we'll leave at 6 o'clock, and he came back about a little bit before 6, and we took off, and we got to church, and sure enough, you know, the, whoo, back then we did a lot of hooping and hollering in church, you know, we got excited a little bit, so the band was playing, the worship team was going, it was like, what? and I'm like, oh my God, Lord, this is little, this is, you know, not so loud, not so crazy, you know, I mean, I want him to come to Jesus, you know. <laughs> and then Pastor gets up preaching on the baptism of the Holy Spirit, people got baptized, he wasn't even done preaching, they were baptized, boom, 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 right across the church, they were being filled with the Holy Spirit, speaking in tongues, I'm like, oh my God, Lord, what are you doing? And he turns to me and he says, this is awesome. <laughs> He goes, this is awesome. God is in this place. Ooh, praise the Lord. I'm like, yes, God. You know what you're doing. I was going to like gently bring him into this thing, you know. Get, get saved first, you know, and then get the Holy Spirit, you know. No, like Paul did. Do you know about the Holy Spirit since you believed in God? Obviously, he was a believer somewhere. He believed. Something caused him to draw him. The Holy Spirit drew him. Oh, praise the Lord. He was just edifying and praising God. We had a great ride back to base. Praise the Lord. God is doing and wants to do those things. I would say it this way. <clears throat> Never be afraid to do what's in the Bible. Yeah, man. Yeah. I mean, the Holy Spirit that draws men to Him, because that's what He does. The Holy Spirit's job is to draw people to Jesus, right? And, uh, and convict them of their sin. So we don't have to do the convicting part. We don't have to point out people's mistakes. The Holy Spirit does that. All you have to do is tell them about the one that can fix the mistakes. Come on, that's good teaching right there. The Holy Spirit points out the mistakes. That's what draws them to Jesus, to Father God. And then we can say, listen. All you have to do is ask God to forgive you of your sin, and He'll be faithful and just to forgive you all of your sins. Amen? Amen. All of them. So as we partner with the Holy Spirit, He leads people to us to share that Jesus is alive and real. Amen? What is revealed in me? Number two. Partnership with the Holy Spirit determines what is revealed in me. The Holy Spirit, whom the Father will send in my name, will teach you all things and will remind you of everything that I have said to you. So think about this. Every You said, what do I say to people? The Holy Spirit will tell you what to say yes. in that moment. Yes. Don't be afraid. I said, I mean, I get scared. I get a little knee-knocking when I start talking to people because I don't know I'm leading them. I know I'm trying to be obedient to the Spirit's message and so as I'm leading them to that point where I get the chance to share Jesus with them, I get a little, you know, I get a little scared, a little, not scared, I can't say scared, um, whatever. I get a little fearful maybe, whatever. But I know when I say the words that the Holy Spirit is telling me, I begin to Okay, I'm, like, I'm amazed at what I say. Yeah. I'm like, do you know? I remember talking to a gentleman here at um, Hilldale. by Hilldale, and he was a professor and blah blah blah, and all a super educated individual. And the Holy Spirit told me, seriously, no, I'm telling you, the Holy Spirit knows everything. Yes. And I'll tell you in a minute how that helps you with parenting too. So anyway, Holy Spirit knows everything. All right. So this gentleman who was sitting in his Cadillac, or he got out of the car when I introduced myself, and I hope you don't hear this at all, but I don't know, you never, I don't know, who knows. Um, he, he, the Holy Spirit says he's in an adulterous affair right now, and he's been doing this for years on his wife. So it wasn't the only one, it was like many. The Holy Spirit said it, so I'm like, I'm yeah. going for it, right? And he just was, he turned white. I mean, he was shocked. He, he said, sit back out in, his, in the car. And I said, the Lord can forgive you and heal your marriage if you want him to. Now, I did pray with him. The great part of the story would have been, 
He repented. He gave his life to Jesus. He, he, God healed his marriage, and they lived happily ever after. I, that didn't happen at that moment. He went away mad. Because he was confronted with a secret that only God knew. Mm -hmm. Now that doesn't happen all the time. I'm just saying, we just got to be ready for whatever God says. Maybe somebody's going through a rough time and the Holy Spirit tells you, hey, pray for that person find finances. And all of a sudden you pray for them and God does it. I remember um, the Holy Spirit, the, I tell you, being a parent, you need Father's Day. We need the Holy Spirit. I remember my, one of my kids, uh, you might want to edit this out later, um, uh, uh, one of my, my daughter, my youngest daughter, right? I, something's wrong. Something isn't right. In my spirit, there's just, I just know. The Holy Spirit says, ask her this question. And I did. And whew, everything was exposed in that moment. As a father, I was like concerned. My daughter's having some issues in her life. I don't know what to do. Father, what do I say? How do I get through? What's going to happen? And all of a sudden, I said, <laughs> one thing you remember. And I, and. Everything was exposed at that moment. Praise the Lord. We have an awesome relationship right now, so God has restored a lot of things. So I'm just saying, God will help you. When as a parent, how do I minister to my children? How do I take care of my little boy? You know, what do I do? The Holy Spirit will give you the right answers. I've had parents would say their kids were off, don't go do this thing, and the parents were praying, and, um, you know, they went out and said, well, let's go find them. And, God drove right to that spot where they're at so they can take their kids out of that bad situation. God will do that for you. Holy Spirit knows everything. There's no secrets in the kingdom of God. Amen? Anybody, um, you know what a thumb drive is? I mean, everybody knows what a thumb drive is, right? You put it in a computer, you download some files, you take it to another computer, and you upload, upload those files. The Holy Spirit is just like that. You plug in the Father God, and you get all the information that God wants, and He plugs it into you, and you have all the information from God. There's no sin. God doesn't want to hide anything from you. He wants to give you everything. Amen? So God, the Holy Spirit is your thumb drive, if you will, to the kingdom of God. He'll give you everything from the Father, because the Father and the Son and the Holy Spirit are all one. The Father is going to say something, Jesus is going to confirm it, and the Holy Spirit is going to tell it to you, and it's, all three of them are going to be equal in that, that conversation. There's not going to be, the Holy Spirit's not going to say one thing that the Father doesn't know, or Jesus, they're all going to be one right. in purpose for you to know the truth, because the truth is going to set you free from whatever you're going through. Can you say amen? amen. Hallelujah. He's going to reveal himself to you. He's not going to hide anything. He has wisdom that he wants to give you in every situation. Who is the most wisest person ever? I mean, you can go through books, you can study, you can do all these wonderful things, but he knows everything, yeah. and he's, going to, he's not going to hold nothing back from you. Isn't that beautiful? Yeah, amen. What do you need in your life? God is not going to hold nothing back from you. He's going to give you everything you need because he has everything. I was thinking about one time, um, I'm a mechanic. I like to fix things that are broken. So having five children, you don't have a lot of money, so you just fix things. Like broken cars, broken starters, broken plumbing, whatever, you name it. You know, so I remember one time where we had gone to um, Shalok, North Carolina. I still want to go back there one day. It's this beautiful church right on the beach. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. Beautiful. But anyway, mm -hmm. we were coming back from there with all the kids in the van, and the van started making this weird clunking sound. And being a mechanic, I know that clunking sound was not a good thing. Yeah. As we're going through this bridge, over this steel bridge in, from Wilmington, North Carolina, up to Jacksonville, North Carolina. And three hour drive. So that was probably two more hours of the drive we had to get over. So I looked at Tina, Tina looked at me, she knew it wasn't good, and I just said, we started praying. And we're praying all the way, Father, just let me get home. That's what I'm saying. Just let me get to the driveway, whatever's wrong, let it break right there, I'm fine with that. Father, please, I'm driving, sounds getting worse, you know? And then every time I turn, there's another sound, and it's just like, just try not to make two radical turns or, or anything. And we got to the driveway, and as we pulled in, and we stopped many times, stop, why we stopped signs, right? We stopped in the driveway, and the front right tire falls off. Right there! Thank you, God! Right? I didn't go, oh my God, what happened right there? I'm like, oh, my kids are safe, my wife is safe, we're home, thank God! So then it came time to fixing it. 
And I had no clue. I, we had no money. So we were like, God, you got to help me, right? So I take this whole front end off of the, the vehicle, went to the junk car, got a new piece, put it all back together. I remember the moment the Holy Spirit helped me. I said, oh, I don't know what I'm doing. I had a manual, but it didn't have all the instructions. You know, I didn't have the internet back then, so I could watch a video. <laughs> didn't have YouTube, you know, so I could check it out, like I do now and everything. I, I uh, was praying, how do I do this? And the Holy Spirit told me how to make this tool so I could take this apart. And I won't explain it all to you, but anyway, he showed me exactly what to do. It came apart, and I was like amazed. And then I had to, we have a hobby shop on base, so after I put it all back together, I had to get the front end aligned, right? And so I just lined up all the rust spots from the old one to the new one, right? So I just, you know, it's got to be close, right? It's got to be close. So I, 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 you know, all the different nuts and the bolts, put it all together, the tie rod back together. Anyway, so I go to the hobby shop to get the, the, the front end line, which is going to cost me, you know, some money. And the guy put up on the rack, it was perfect. There was nothing wrong with it, right? It was perfect. God did that for me. I'm not, I'm a mechanic, so that's, I'm, I'm, I'm praising God, right? But, you know, some of you guys are computer people, and you do all sorts of things, right? And you say, well, God, I can't figure this code out. I can't figure this out. And he'll tell you. Just like NASA, you know when they did the, one of the first space shuttles? Or not space shuttles, the, uh, the uh, Apollo launches? There was a Christian man in there doing no calculations. So when they had that problem, they had to bring the the uh, the, uh, the Apollo was it Apollo thirteen was, it, was that the one Apollo twelve Apollo twelve yeah. and it broke it messed up and so they had to bring it back. They want to get the guys home safely. He's the one who calculated going around the moon and coming back. They don't show that in the movie, but anyway, he's a, he was a Christian. God showed him what degree they had to go around the moon so they could come back into Earth safely. God knows everything. Call upon Him. He'll give you what you need. You partner with Him, and you can, you, it's amazing what He'll do in your life. Okay, I'm looking at the clock. Okay, number three. What is released through me? What is released through you when God's power, um, Holy Spirit is in you is His power? Now, oh, power, think about this. In Acts, it says, they were endued with power when the Holy Spirit came on them. The same power that's here today, 2017, the same power that the disciples had back then is the same power that you and I get really, uh, you know, religious I tell you in the Greek word it says dynamite. Mm -hmm. This means dunamis. It means dynamite. You have dynamite power when the Holy Spirit is in you. Remember what Pastor Anderson said, the power of that is in here or the power that's out here is greater than the power that's in here. So you're holding back the Holy Spirit in your life because you don't want that power to flow through your life. Why? Because you don't know what's going to happen. That's right. I mean, you might go down the street and lay hands on a sick person and God will raise them up. Yeah. And then you lead them to Jesus and they lead somebody else to Jesus. And the whole neighborhood gets saved because the power was released. I was going to open this up, but I can't. Because I have to clean it up. <laughs> <laughs> Stir up the power that's in you so you can be explosive for the kingdom of God. I hope that cat stayed. Hold on. Could you imagine that? All of us right now, in this, just in this room, just this, in this room, we believe, what did you say it was uh, nation, what did you say up here? Uh, salvation for the, what did you say? Salvation for the nation. Salvation for the nation, yeah. That was really good. I'm sorry, I, I just got, because we were talking about that earlier, and it was just like, when you said that, I was like, yeah. <laughs> How are we going to bring salvation to the nations if we keep this cap on? Because the Holy Spirit, I've learned, will never make you do anything that you don't want to do. Right. So the power of suppressing Him is greater than the power. He will never do anything in your life that you don't want Him to do. Yeah. So it's on you. It's a gift from Father God to you. So you can be the power and see the nations come to Jesus. I think Pastor Brian had led worship last week. He said, you guys got a lot of diversity in your church. I said, I said, yeah. I said, that's what we want. We want to see the nations come to Jesus at Capital City Church. 
I was, we were down in North Carolina, we got to go to a couple churches, all white churches. It was fine, you know? But I hate the fact that on Sunday morning we yeah. have this church over here, this church over here, this church over here, and none of them. We're meeting together. We're going to break the mobile. We're going to be one nation under God. No, that's the that's a, that's a American thing, right? <laughs> <laughs> that still goes, though. Yeah. Right? One group of people worshiping God together. Because God, I believe, honors what we do. <laughs> Why did God give us the Holy Spirit? We need to answer that question. Why did God give you this power in your life? And I said it earlier, for one reason only, that we can tell the world that he's alive. He's alive. I remember as little children, we say, Jesus lives in my heart. And we know that's not true. We know the Holy Spirit lives in us, right? But the same Spirit in Jesus is the same Spirit in you. And the reason he gave us his Holy Spirit is so we can be his witnesses with power with power to even like the early disciples if I have to lose my life for this kingdom I will with power he wants to give you power to let people know that are hurting that are desperate that have drug addictions that have alcohol problems that have this problem or that problem he wants to he wants to fill you today if um you know, some, some of you are here today, maybe you never actually really accepted Jesus as your Lord and Savior. Maybe you never said yes to Jesus. Maybe it's the first time that you heard about the Holy Spirit. I know the Holy Spirit is moving in our lives. Us that are believers and us the unbelievers, he's, he, he's moving and he's touching and he's drawing us close to Father God. So let's do this. Why don't we, why don't we pray?